So what I'd like to do in this uh, video and is to tell you about comments. There's a lot you can say about comments, but I'm going to talk about comments in the context of the solar wind, which is this uh, deathly collection of protons and electrons which are hitting us from the wind. Okay. So the first thing is that if you look at a comet, typically it has this, this long tail about it. And there's a question that we're going to answer about this, which is question number 47, which says, can you tell a comet's direction of travel based on the picture alone? So if you look at this picture here, can you tell me what direction the comet is traveling in? Okay, so that's one thing that we sort of have to address. And the second thing is just about this tail here, that if you look very carefully at it, there's usually two tails for a comet. And if you look very carefully at this here, you can see that there's sort of a tail here, this bluish one right here, and there's like another one here, sort of this whitish one. So one of the tails is usually blue, and one of the tails is usually white. So a comet comes in and has these two tails. So we have a couple things. Can you tell the direction it's moving in? And what is about these two tails? Okay, so that's what we're going to get on with comets here in the context of the solar wind, as I said there. Okay, so on we go. So if I ask you this question then, that sort of gets on to question number 47. In what direction is this comet moving? It's very, very tempting in this case here to say that the comet is moving down. Very tempting. Why? Because I think you're immediately thinking of something like a person with long hair maybe riding in a car. So there's a person in the car maybe with some nice long orange hair like that. And, well, that's pretty long hair. But when you're driving in the car and not the solar wind, but the good old beautiful summer day wind blows in our hair, uh, the hair sort of gets pushed back that way. And that's sort of the wind analogy, right? It's what wind does to hair. And so you may, so I, I think that's why you would probably say then that this comet is definitely going this way. But wait a minute, because this region right here is basically an outer space, okay? There's no air and no wind the way we're talking about wind up here, all right? Uh, but what you do know basically is there is definitely a solar wind. So I think your basis for saying that the comet moves down is not right. And indeed, that is something to consider that this comet may be moving down, but I don't know, okay? I just don't know if it's moving down or not. But I am definitely can't say definitively just because the tails are in this part of the graph and the comet and sort of the nucleus of the comet is going on this way that's going down. So you can't really say that. Okay. So, well, first of all, like what are comets? Well, I think we said earlier in the quarter, maybe in the introduction, that they, uh, the comets themselves are dirty snowballs. So they're basically ice that just sort of got all dirty. Okay. So what are they? Well, if this is our inner solar system right here, so this is the sun, you see how big that we're getting here. It's the sun and some of the orbits of the planets in here. I don't even think you can see the planets, the inner planets, because we're zoomed out so far. But if you go way, 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 way out like this, like maybe that big distance of something like a thousand AUs away from the sun, something like that, you reach this area of the solar system called the Kuiper Belt. Let's say so, Kuiper, not Cuper. Kuiper Belt. So Kuiper Belt. And what the Kuiper Belt is basically is sort of a bunch of uh, snowy rocks and ice that were just sort of left over from the formation of the solar system and never really ma made it into a planet or anything like that. And so one, what can happen once in a while is if you go up into the Kuiper Belt, there might be like, I don't know, this chunk of icy rock and that chunk of icy rock that might come in and sort of collide with each other. And it might go boom once in a while. And when they go boom like that, it might sort of send one careening in towards the sun. It might sort of get connected somehow with the sun's gravity, in which case the object might start coming in and for the rest of its time sort of spend its time orbiting around the sun like this. So it got some initial kick from something else in the Kyber Belt, but then after that, it's sort of bound by the sun's gravity and starts making this massive orbit like that. So you can see it is a gravitational orbit just the way all the others are here. There's definitely like maybe if the comet is right there, here's the line that connects it with the sun, 
you know, there'll be a force of gravity pulling in like that, and then all the usual things hold and around it goes forever and ever. Very, very long periods, though. Long, long, long periods. Nothing like a year or 10 years or anything like that, much longer than that. So that's sort of where they come from. They come from the Kuiper belt. Okay, so and they're just sort of these dirty snowballs. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, this Rosetta mission from back in 2014, um, Europe actually sent a space probe out to rendezvous with a comet. And I think I showed you this here. This is a real picture right here. This is sort of their spacecraft that they send up, and that's the comet that they're approaching there. Okay, so it's sort of going in that way towards the comet. Okay, and here's what the comet looks like. So this would definitely sort of be dirty ice, so it's sort of dark gray like that. And I hope you can see a little bit of this wispiness coming off right here because this is the beginnings of the comet's tail, just sort of like melting off like that. So in one sense, the comet's tail is just some melt of the comet. Okay, so keep that in mind. And just sort of another picture as they started to approach the comet, and there's that tail again coming in of the dirty snowball. And this is how big the comet would be compared to Los Angeles. I think I showed this to you earlier in the class. So it was quite large. And you can see it looks like just the fusion of two different size snowballs from that Kuiper, maybe the Kuiper belt, something like that, who knows. Okay, and so here's the issue then with that tail then. Let me start sort of telling you about how the comet tail works and get that answer out to question number 47. So we'll start that in the next video.